That's the forgiveness of God. God doesn't need to tell you, hey, hey, you did that. Hold a grudge. Hold a grudge. No, God is full of mercy. God can forgive anyone at any time. Uh, I appreciate you emphasizing questions from non-Muslims, seeing as we did hear an hour presentation already, and uh, I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to ask, how would you accept it if I treated the Quran the manner in which you treated the Bible and other Muslims? And I'm specifically referring to, you use numerous passages from the Gospels. Great. Sometimes the very next sentence would have an assertion of Godhead, divinity. For example, you quoted John 10, 29. John 10, 30 would have an assertion of deity. You quoted John 14, 6, stopped before the assertion of I am the way, the truth, and the life, which how can any man claim to be life inherent? You mentioned Mark 13, 32. Uh, and you didn't mention he called God his father, which would imply he's the son. So my point is, if I did that, if I opened to Surah 9, and I showed verse, I had 29, 37, and I showed other places, I said, see, all Muslims do this, this, this. I, I'm not saying that. But if I did, you would probably say, whoa, I'm kind of feeling that way right now with your treatment of the scriptures. I'd appreciate it if you could work on that. Thanks. Firstly, the Qur'an, by the grace of God, this is the only book on the face of the earth which actually gives us an acid test, a falsification test. The Qur'an states in chapter 4, verse 82, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا do they not consider the Qur'an with thought, with care? The Qur'an is appealing to you, my brother. It's asking you to study it, to look into it, to look and study it. And the Qur'an says, had it been from other than God, you would find in it many discrepancies, many contradictions. The Qur'an doesn't have any contradictions. The Qur'an doesn't make a single error because it is what we believe to be the word of Almighty God. And I can provide evidence for this and I wish I had the time. That the Qur'an is the book which conforms to modern science. The Qur'an has many miraculous attributes. And one of these miraculous attributes is the scientific attribute. That is the fact that the Qur'an that there are so many truths which we are only being able to uncover today by means of scientific technology, which has been stated 1,400 years ago in Al-Quran. And I don't know if I should go through some of these miracles. Uh, Brother Seth, would you like me? Okay, the chairman, the chairman says no, but if anyone should ask that question, I hope the chairman... How... I, I'm coming. I'm coming to that. You, say, Whoa, you, can't do that. I, I, you see, how did I treat the Bible? I looked into the Bible, I studied the Bible, and you said, and you, you, you just now alleged that I was p perhaps quoting out of context. But let me, let me go into those same verses that you quoted. You said, in John chapter 10, verse 29, I quoted Jesus who said, My Father is greater than all. Now I will give you the context because the people might think that I was quoting it out of context. Well, not at all. You know what's the context of that verse? Do you know, sir? What's the context of that verse? Huh? The context is peace before winter, commonly called Hanukkah, and the Jews are asserting his divinity, which is again why he's going to be stoned in John 10, verse 36. That's not the context. The context, in order to get the context, you've got to refer to verse 23, John chapter 10, verse 23, where Jesus, peace be upon him, is walking in Solomon's porch. And the Jews come to Jesus and gather around him and say, if thou art the Christ, tell us plainly. If you are the Christ, 
tell us plainly. Jesus says, I told you, but you do not believe me because the miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me. But you do not believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life. Then take note what Jesus says. No one shall pluck them out of my hand. For the father who gave them to me is greater than all. No one shall pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Now Jesus is saying he is one. God I and my father are one. But in what? In the fact that no one will pluck the disciples out of God's hand. And because God is on Jesus' side, God is with Jesus, no one will pluck them out of Jesus' hand because Jesus and God are one. I mean, this, this expression is used so often. I and my father are one. You and I are one. How many times I tell people we won, we won. The Bible uses this expression and Jesus uses it also in John chapter 17 verse 21 where he prays for his disciples and he says and he says in his prayer for his disciples oh my father that they may all all of his disciples be one in us as thou father art in me and i in thee that they may be one in us jesus is saying that all the disciples and god and him should be one that makes you 12 plus another three 15 gods but this is not what Jesus meant he was trying to explain that God is on his side I am the way the truth and the life was Jesus claiming divinity I must go through this because people might think I'm quoting the gospel out of context I am quoting it in the context and I'm pleading please read the context of your Bible because Jesus is saying I am the way the truth and the life then Philip says show us the father and that will be enough for us. Then Jesus says, Philip, how long have I been among you? Don't you know me? Even though I have been among you for such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Now what do Christ Christians think? That this is Jesus claiming to be God. But what does 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 16 say? It says, God cannot be seen. No man has ever seen God and no man, no man can see God. So what was Jesus implying? Brothers and sisters, Jesus was implying that God is on his side. That when you see my righteousness, Philip, when you see my way, Philip, you see that I am, I am following the path of God. I am consistent despite sometimes that I'm hungry. Sometimes I feel thirsty. I am a human being. Yet I am consistent in the obedience of God. Jesus' life itself, the very life of Jesus was a miracle. A miracle which teaches man, wow, this is a life of a man who lived the way of God. Let us live that way. Let us try and emulate him. Let us try and follow him. It doesn't mean I am God. I am the way does not mean I am God. So we have to look into the context and we have to look into the context of these verses and when we look into the context and study the Bible correctly, we find that the context of the Bible denotes that Jesus was a human being, that Jesus was not God, but he was the mighty messenger of God. Thank you. Thank you for that, Molana. And thank you, Seth. Seth, just if anybody, including Seth, if they, you feel that yet any verse is coded out of context, it's your prerogative to stand up and say, this is not what the verse says, or the following verse says exactly the opposite. That's your prerogative.